The Huskies are getting ready for their big rivalry matchup of the year, taking on Ball State. NIU was coming off of a 45-40 loss against Toledo at home last week, but despite that loss, NIU still had a shot at making it into the MAC championship this season, so every game from here on out was crucial for them. This game couldn't get off to a better start for the Huskies as transfer linebacker Christian Furman would make this interception for a pick six. And just like that, the defense helped the Huskies jump out to an early 7-0 lead over the Cardinals. Cardinals. We'd see if that early start for the defense could either continue or if it was just a fluke as the Cardinals were driving and it looked like it may have been a fluke as the defense would give up a touchdown on the next possession. Halfway through the first quarter and our offense was just now seeing the field for the first time and this was not a pretty first possession as they would end up going three and out after a big sack. After getting that stop it looked like Ball State was looking to score again but Nate Valkersell would come away with an interception for the Huskies defense and he would take this all the way back to the house for their second pick six of the game. Despite that one touchdown, NIU's defense was off to a great start, and now it was Javon Bird who was jumping the comeback route, and he would take this all the way to the end zone for NIU's third pick six of the game. What a great start to this game for NIU's defense, but surely they couldn't keep it up as I don't know how Ball State got this wide open. And despite making a pick six for the defense earlier in this quarter, it definitely looked like Nate Valk Cell dropped the ball on the coverage here. One would think that having three defensive touchdowns in a game would put you up by a lot, but despite that fact, we were still only up by seven over Ball State here in the second quarter, so we needed to get things going. It was time for our offense to step up to the plate now and finally put some points on the board, and it was looking like we were going to do that here, as Gavin Williams would finish this drive off with a Wildcat power. Time to see if our defense could miraculously get a fourth pick six today in the first half, or just get a stop. Our defense historically has been pretty Pretty bad on third downs this season so far and unless we were getting takeaways we normally weren't getting third down stops like this but thankfully we were able to hold the Cardinals out of the end zone this drive and even though that didn't leave us much time left in the first half coach Brooks decided to just run out the clock and head into halftime with his 11 point lead I was super proud of how well our defense came out to play to start the game today in the first half and I was hoping our offenses level of play could keep up and match the defense we'd be backed up to another third and seven but fourth and seven would be too long to go for at this point so we would put the ball back over to Ball State and they would take over for the first time on offense in the second half and they were off to a great start that would get them down inside NIU territory inside the 30 and this play would put them inside the five but after our defense pushed them back out to the 11 they would look to go to the end zone it would be Javon Bird with a second interception the junior quarterback Kyle Kelly was having an extremely rough day for Ball State today and our offense needed to take advantage of this opportunity he had given us. Fourth and three was close enough that Coach Brooks would decide to go for it again and they would pick it up no problem. And that aggressive decision would pay off as Ethan Hampton would find Kenji Lewis who would slip one tackle and take this to the end zone. And that touchdown would put the Huskies up 35 to 17 over Ball State here late in the third. The Cardinals would be backed up to a third and nine but once again our defense would not be able to get off the field on third down and would give up a huge gain which would lead Ball State inside the 10 yard line and they would be looking to score here but would just barely be short of the end zone and anyone in their right mind would think Ball State would score here but NIU would force a fumble. Somehow our defense's performance today just kept getting better and better throughout this game and it looked like our offense was starting to finally pick things up too as they were trying to run out as much clock as they could on this possession and one more touchdown should put this game out of reach for the Ball State Cardinals today and we would be winning the bronze stock. On third and eight, Ethan Hampton would drop back to throw and he would find tight end Jake Applegate for the touchdown. And Ball State could try their best to fight back into this game, but with less than three minutes to go, it wasn't looking good for them. On second and ten, right before the two minute warning, they would find their way down inside the ten yard line, where they would then get into the end zone on first and goal from the six. There was nothing they could do to overcome this deficit though, as we would kneel out the clock and the Huskies would get the big time win here in their rivalry game over Ball State in the bronze stock trophy would be coming back home with them to DeKalb. Our defense played a huge part in today's victory with four interceptions and one forced fumble in the red zone. And Javon Bird had two of those interceptions himself
off with one of them being taken back for a touchdown. That big time win over our rivals gave us two upgrades for our coaching abilities and we'd bring up our secondary recruiting up to tier three. But more importantly, we had jumped up to the number one team for four star tight end Kevin Shaughnessy. And we now had a big time lead over Jamie Sembrilo, who we looked at last episode in our recruiting update. This was the very first look at the projected 12 team playoff here at the end of the season. And of course, NIU was not in there, but we were projected to make the quick lane bowl this year, going up against number 17, Wisconsin. Our only big news the next week in our bye week was we had jumped up to the number one school for three star gem quarterback, Daquan Hunter. He would be visiting in our week 12 matchup against Akron. But for now, we needed to focus on this game against Western because we still had a shot at making it into the MAC Conference Championship. The Broncos would start out with the ball in today's game as they would go right to work down the field. But on third and eight, our defense would come up with a rare third down stop that we haven't seen a lot of this year. That would give us the opportunity to go up first here over the Broncos as that would be big for us because we've been in too many situations this year where we play from behind the entire game. To try and avoid that from happening, Coach Brooks would decide to go for it on fourth and six and Kenji Lewis would be wide open. And it was looking like that decision would pay off, but Ethan Hampton would be hit and he would fumble the football as Western Michigan would scoop it up and with no one in front of them and the field wide open, they would take this back for a scoop and score. It doesn't feel great when it's not your defense that's scoring touchdowns, as Western Michigan's defense was giving us a taste of our own medicine from our matchup last week against Ball State and how our defense played. But it didn't look like our defense was going to be playing that well today as Western Michigan would find their way down into the end zone. And we were now down 14 to the Broncos and we're going to have to punt yet again. Just when you think this game couldn't get off to a worse start than it already had for us, we would give up a deep bomb down the left side for another Broncos touchdown, which would be followed up by Ethan Hampton almost throwing an interception here, but would thankfully be caught for a first down. We hadn't been over on Western Michigan's side of the field too much this game, but we are going to take full advantage of this opportunity here, as Kenji Lewis would set us up with a first and goal opportunity, and Jalen Johnson would find the end zone on the sweep play, which would then be followed up by our defense game another third down stop against the Broncos. We could not squander this opportunity they had given us now as we had a chance to make it only a one possession game on this drive. We're on first and 10 from the shotgun. Ethan Hampton would find his tight end, Jake Applegate, who was wide open and would basically walk into the end zone. But with a minute and a half still to go in the first half, we might have given Western Michigan too much time. They were inside our own 30 as they would go across the middle and find their way inside the 10 yard line. We're on first and goal. It looked like they were gonna score but Jacob Finley would come up with a huge pick in the end zone and instead of taking a knee he would make the risky decision to take it out as he was going down the right sideline and he would not be caught as he would take this to the house for a touchdown. Just like that it was tied up at halftime and the Huskies would take full advantage of that opportunity to strike first and take their first lead of the game tonight. Western Michigan wasn't messing around though as they would go for it here on fourth and one and that play would pay off where we now needed a touchdown to keep ahead of the Broncos but Ethan Hampton would go across the middle and that would be picked off by the Western Michigan. Michigan defense, which in turn would lead them down the field and into the end zone to take the lead right back. We now had a fourth and six of our own, and while it wasn't going to be a touchdown, we at least would pick up the first down with Jake Applegate, and that reception would set up a touchdown from Ontario Brown for us. We needed to stop against Western Michigan on this drive to have an opportunity to take the lead back, but this wasn't going to happen as they would go across the middle with nothing but green in front of them for a touchdown, where once again, we would be backed up to a fourth and six, and we wouldn't be able to convert. We now needed our defense to come up with a big third down stop, and they would do just that. As down by seven, we'd gotten down the field with 12 seconds left, but this pass would be knocked incomplete, and the Huskies would lose the heartbreaker here in Kalamazoo as the Broncos would survive this max shootout. Such a shame to lose that thrilling game, but we were headed into week 12, sitting at four and five, where we were still the top school for four-star tight end Kevin Shaughnessy, three-star right end Jamie Sambrilo, three-star middle linebacker Jorge Fraboni, three-star halfback Zach Jardis, and three-star Jim De 
Nick Juan Hunter, who was going to be visiting this next game against Akron. Despite that loss to Western Michigan, we were still only one spot out from finding ourselves in the MAC Conference Championship this season. And here was an updated look at the college football playoff projection headed into week 12 of the season, where we were now projected to be taking on Arkansas State in the 68 Ventures Bowl. Next episode is going to be a long one as we finish the regular season with our last three games, where we will be starting at home against the Akron Zips.